This lesson, we are going to learn how to graph the reciprocal of a function. First, graph the original function. Second, graph the reciprocal of that function using the following steps. Step one: all the x-intercepts on the original function they will become the vertical asymptotes on the reciprocal function. Vice versa, all the vertical asymptotes on the original function. They will become the x-intercept on the reciprocal function. Step two: all the points with y values of positive negative one, they will stay as the same points on the reciprocal function. Step three: all the maximum points on the original function, they will become the minimum points on the reciprocal functions. Likewise, all the minimum points on the original function, they will become. The maximum points of the reciprocal function. Step four: All the increasing intervals of the original function, they will become the decreasing intervals of the reciprocal function. Vice versa, all the decreasing intervals of the original function, they will become the increasing intervals of the reciprocal function. Now let's work on example one to see how we can graph the reciprocal of a linear function. Y equals two minus x. We know the y-intercept is at two, so first let's put the y-intercept on the graph. Next, let's define our slope. The slope is the coefficient in front of the x term, which is a negative one. Negative one can be written as a fraction negative one over positive one. This means we are going to go down by one unit and go to the right by one unit from the y-intercept. To get to the next point, then we're going to repeat the process by using the slope multiple times to generate more points to graph the line. After we graph the original function, then we are ready to graph the reciprocal of that function. Following the steps here. Step one: the x-intercept will become the vertical asymptote on the original function. Step two. The points that have y values of one and negative one, they stay as the same points of the reciprocal function. Here we're going to skip step three because we don't have any maximum nor minimum points. Step four. Now we have to change all the increasing intervals into decreasing intervals, and decreasing intervals into increasing intervals. However, oftentimes. It is very confusing just to change the intervals around. So let's do a different way. We use the vertical asymptote to cut the graph into two different regions, and the green dot is our starting point. So from this green dot, if I need to go this direction, that means I have to go left and I have to go up. That means the reciprocal function will be. Going to the left and going down, so the graph will look like this. And once again, coming from the green dots, now we have to finish this part of the graph. So we have to go to the right and go down. Then the reciprocal function will be go to the right and go up. Now. Let's take a look on the other side of the vertical asymptote. Once again, we are starting from this green dot, and we have to finish this line segment. So that means we have to go left, we have to go up. Then the reciprocal function will be going to the left and going down. Next part, we have to finish this part of the linear relation. So we are going to the right and going down. Then the reciprocal function will be going to the right and going up. So here is our reciprocal function, one over f x. Sometimes we could use the original points that is on the purple line to check our reciprocal function to see whether or not it's correct. So let's do a verification. This point here, the y value is two, so the reciprocal value will be one over two, which is zero point five. Here, the y value is three, so the reciprocal function will be one over three. Here, the y value is half, so the reciprocal function will be at two. Now, let's look at this region here. 
This y value here is negative 0.5, so the reciprocal function will be at negative 2. This y value is at negative 2, so the reciprocal function will be at negative 0.5. Now, let's use the graph to answer the remaining questions. So first, we have to look at the positive negative interval of the original function, fx. So look at this purple linear relation here. We say the positive region is here, where the y values are positive. That means the x value will be from negative infinity to 2. The negative region will be here, which is 2 to positive infinity. Let's look at the reciprocal function, which is our gx. The positive region will be here, which is also negative infinity to 2. And the negative region will be here, which is 2 to positive infinity. As you can see, the reciprocal function and the original function, they will have the same positive and negative intervals. Next, let's identify the increasing and decreasing intervals for both the original function and the reciprocal function. Let's pretend we are on the roller coaster and we are always moving forward, which means we are always going to the right. So as we are moving to the right, we are going down. That means this linear relation of x is always decreasing. There is no increasing interval. So we say the increasing interval for f x is not applicable, and the decreasing is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's move on to our reciprocal function. As we are moving forward, that means we are going to the right, we are going up. That means this is an increasing interval. On the other side of the vertical asymptote, as we are going forward, we are also moving up. That means this is another increasing interval. So we can say the increasing interval for gx, which is negative infinity to 2, union 2 to positive infinity, and we do not have any decreasing interval. As you can see, the decreasing interval from the original function will become the increasing interval of the reciprocal function, excluding the x-intercepts, because the x-intercept becomes a vertical asymptote. Next one, the increasing interval from the original function will become the decreasing interval on the reciprocal function. Example 2. Now we're going to try to graph the reciprocal function of a quadratic relation. First, let's graph the parabola y equals 4 minus x squared. We can factor this quadratic relation into 2 plus x times by 2 minus x. So we can find the zeros, which is at positive negative 2. And we can find the y-intercept by letting x equal to 0. We will get y equals 4. Let's find the vertex. X value can be found by adding the two zeros up divided by 2 and substitute 0 into x into the original function to find the y value. So we know the vertex will be at 0 and 4. Now, let's graph the parabola. After we have the parabola, then we're going to follow the steps to graph the reciprocal function. Step 1, all the x-intercept, they will become vertical asymptotes. Step 2, the points that have y value of positive 1 or the y value of negative 1, they will still be the points on the reciprocal function. Step 3. The maximum point will become the minimum point. So we have a parabola. The maximum is at 0 and 4. The minimum will be at 0 and reciprocal of 4, which is 1 over 4. Step 4. Let's graph the reciprocal function. So we can see this graph has been divided by the vertical asymptotes into three different regions. For the most left-hand side region, we are going to start from the green dots. One part of the blue line is going to the left, going down. So the reciprocal will be going to the left, going up. And coming from the green dot again, for this part of the blue line, we have to go to the right, go up. Then the reciprocal will be go to the right, go down. For the middle region, starting from the green dot, for this part of the blue line, we have to go left, go down. So the reciprocal function will be going left, going up. From this green dot to this green dot, 
but this part, the blue line, we are going to the right the whole time. However, we're going up and then we're going down. So the reciprocal function will always be going to the right, but we will go down and we will go up. Then, starting from this green dot to cover this part of the blue line, we go to the right, go down. So the reciprocal function will be go to the right and go up. For the most right-hand side region now, starting from the green dot to cover this blue part, we have to go left, go up. So the reciprocal function will be going to the left, going down. Starting from the green dot again, this time we have to cover this part of the blue line. We're going to the right, going down. So the reciprocal function will be going to the right and going up. Now we have the reciprocal function gx. Now let's use the graph to answer the positive negative intervals. So for the function fx, which is the blue parabola, the positive region will be from negative 2 to 2, and the negative region will be negative infinity to negative 2 and 2 to positive infinity. For the reciprocal function gx, the positive region will be from negative 2 to 2 as well, and the negative region will be from negative infinity to negative 2 and from 2 to positive infinity. Let's identify the increasing and decreasing intervals for fx and gx. First, let's look at the parabola. Once again, we are pretending we are on the roller coaster. We are always moving forward. That means we are always going to the right. So for this part of the graph, we are always climbing up, which is increasing. And for this part of the graph, it's always dropping. That means we're decreasing. We exclude the maximum point because at the maximum point, we are not moving. Therefore, the increasing interval for fx is negative infinity to zero, and the decreasing interval is from zero to positive infinity. For the reciprocal function, for the most left-hand side piece, when we are moving forward, we are going down. That means decreasing interval. And the next piece, Starting from x equals negative 2 and going forward, which is going to the right, we are dropping again. So from negative 2 to 0 is also decreasing. However, after x equals 0, we are climbing up. That means after 0, from 0 to 2, this is increasing interval. And for the last piece on the right-hand side, we are always climbing up as we're moving forward. So this is also another increasing interval. So therefore... We say increasing interval is from 0 to 2 and 2 to infinity. And the decreasing interval is from negative infinity to negative 2 and negative 2 to 0.